So as we all know by now, Scuf is the best controller on the market. Yeah, you gotta review this controller. Wait, 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 what is this? Looks like another custom controller has entered the market. I guess we should take a look at this one. All right, all jokes aside, this controller right here is a Hex Gaming controller, and no, I am not sponsored by Hex Gaming, but they were nice enough to send me one of their custom controllers. So what I wanna do is go through everything that this controller comes with and see how it compares to scuff controllers to see if it's worth it as an alternative option for those of you looking for a custom controller to play your games with. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So to start off, we need to see what this scuff controller comes with just to set a baseline of what to compare any other custom controllers to. This specific scuff controller is the scuff infinity it does come with two paddles that can be remapped to one of the face buttons on the front. It does come with nice grips so that your hands don't slip off the controller. It does have a nice red accent to go with it. So the buttons are red and the little rings around the thumbsticks are also red. It does allow for interchangeable thumbsticks, although I do not have this with this option. I just have my control freaks situated on top of the existing scuff thumbsticks, but of course it is an option in case somebody wanted to just have higher thumbsticks. There is a small mechanism on the back of the R1 and R2 buttons, which allow you to have a shorter push distance, which allows for a quick trigger tap. And this scuff controller does come with a remapping option, which you do need the key for. This is also an added feature that it came with so that I can remap the paddles that are on the back to one of the face buttons on the front. But by default, each one is mapped to the X and O buttons on the front of the controller. So now that we have the baseline set, let's take a look at the Hex Gaming Controller to see how it compares to my Scuf Infinity Controller. So this Hex Gaming Controller does come with a purple chameleon finish to it, which only affects the front of the controller while the back of it is like a matte black finish. It does have interchangeable thumbsticks, which do come included in the kit that it comes in. It does have four remappable buttons on the back instead of just two, but unlike Scuff, these are individual buttons that are situated on the back of the controller. Also on the back of the controller, there are two little knobs that you can set down and up depending on if you want a short trigger tap or a long trigger tap. This is very comparable to the Scuff controller because the Scuff controller does have this option, but not in this particular manner. It is built directly into the R1 and R2 sticks that you just have to swing around. This one is just below the R1 and R2 triggers. And as you may have noticed by now, this is a bigger controller than the PS4 and the Scuf Infinity controller. I would say it looks like it's based off an Xbox controller, but then again, I am not completely sure as I do not have an Xbox. And besides that, it does come with a little logo right where the PS button normally would be on a PS4 controller. So that's basically this Hex Gaming controller in a nutshell. So I did spend about a month using this controller. I used it on Warzone, I used it on Cyberpunk 2077, and I used it on Rocket League. Surprisingly, even without grips like the Scuf Infinity controller has, I didn't find myself slipping off of the controller whenever I played games that were very competitive. When it came to remapping the back triggers to the front, it was super, super easy. All I had to do was hold down that back button for three seconds and then just hold down whatever button I wanted to remap as well as the button on the back for three more seconds and that was it. That was it, that was all you had to do and it was done and you can go right back to playing as you normally would. And that is one thing I did like about this controller versus the scuff. For the scuff, you did have to buy a certain key which was of course extra with this scuff controller in order to remap your back paddles to one of the front facing buttons. And in terms of the size, even though this controller is a little bit bigger than a normal PS4 controller, as well as a Scuf Infinity controller, I actually got quite used to it and it didn't really bother me at all, especially since I do have bigger hands. Now, a big noticeable difference between the Scuf Infinity controller and this Hex Gaming controller is of course, the Scuf Infinity controller has two paddles while the Hex Gaming controller has four buttons. But since I'm so used to using just two paddles from my Scuf Infinity controller, all I ended up doing was just remapping two buttons on one side of the Hex Game controller 
to just one single button on the front facing buttons. So basically one side was O while the other side was X. So I only really just use two buttons. Now what do I think about when it comes to paddles versus buttons? Well, I mean, I am so used to using paddles on my scuff controller, but it does take a little bit of a learning curve in order to get used to paddles from the scuff lineup. As I explained on my how to get used to a scuff controller video, it is actually much different holding a scuff controller than it is holding a normal PS4 controller. And this is because the ergonomics on a scuff controller with the paddles force you to move your hands in a different position than you normally would on a normal PS4 controller. So if you just started getting a scuff controller, you're gonna find yourself pressing those paddles even though you're not gonna wanna do that. It's inevitable, it's gonna happen, but at the end of the day, it's part of the learning process when it comes to these custom controllers. Now with that said, since hex gaming controllers do use buttons rather than paddles, that is a huge advantage because you don't have to really change up your hand position as much as you would with the scuff infinity controllers or the impact or any other scuff controller that is in the lineup. But even with that being said, I do think that paddles are a superior way of pressing buttons on the back of the controller than having individual buttons. That's just my take on it because one, if you have large or small hands, since there's a bigger surface area in order for you to push, then you don't have to really worry too much. While custom controllers that use buttons, if your fingers are smaller or if it's too big, then you are gonna have to change up your hand position or the way you hold the controllers. So that also takes a learning curve, but overall, if you're just trying to get into the custom controller market, I do think that buttons are a little bit easier. So with that out of the way, let's just go through the pros that I could come up with with this particular Hex gaming controller. Starting off with the main pro, I absolutely love the color combination. This blue and purple looks phenomenal, especially whenever I have it sitting in the back of my display whenever I'm not playing any games. Now, if you don't like this purple and blue color, they also do have various options on their website. But of course, I like this color, that's why I asked them to send me this particular color. <laughs> also, the packaging that it comes with is quite nice, and included in the packaging, it does come with interchangeable thumbsticks, which is great because with Scuff, you do have to pay separately for interchangeable thumbsticks, so having that included with this Hex Gaming Controller is a huge plus in my opinion. Because it comes with interchangeable thumbsticks, that removes the need for me to buy Control Freaks in order to raise the level of my thumbstick. Also, not to mention, the rear buttons on the back of the controller are included with the Hex Gaming Controller. This is not something you do have to pay extra for, like the scuff controller so it's nice that that's another included feature with this particular controller and lastly the price is super competitive when compared to the scuff controllers as you'll see on the screen now these are the two prices that i would have paid for the exact same scuff impact controller versus the price that i would have paid on a hex gaming controller but as we all know even though there's good things there are also bad things to consider when it comes to anything in life. Now a huge factor which I hope that they address at some point in the future is the fact that since there's sliders for the R2 and L2 buttons, that actually gets in the way of your fingers and it actually leaves a mark on my finger whenever I'm playing for long hours. So it's kind of annoying and I really hate that it's such a big bulge on the back of the controller. If it was something a lot more subtle or a lot more closer to the controller and not bulging out so much, maybe that would be a way better option than it has right now. Because right now, it's leaving marks on my fingers and it's kind of annoying. Also, regarding the chameleon color that's on the controller, one thing I wish they would have done was just wrap it all the way around the controller. I mean, damn, like I got so excited seeing the front of the controller, but then when I look at the back, it's just black. I mean, I was hoping that it was gonna be the whole controller, but it's not. <laughs> and also, this is a con for, not for me, but for a lot of you out there, especially if you're not into big controllers. This is a bigger controller, as you can see, side by side to a normal PS4 controller or a scuff controller. This is definitely a bigger controller. So if you're into this 
PS4 controller and the way these are shaped for smaller hands, I guess you could say. No offense to anybody out there. But yeah, maybe you might not be into these bigger controller options. So that's another thing to consider. Uh, I actually got used to it and I actually like bigger controllers because I have bigger hands, as I said earlier. So this is not really a factor for me, but maybe for a lot of you out there who have smaller hands, this can actually be a determining factor. Also, since I only had a month to use this controller, I have not been able to use this for a long period of time. So I do not know how this controller is going to be one year from now, two years from now. So that is another huge thing that, I mean, if I was gonna wait for that to happen, you guys wouldn't see this for two years. So I, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. But I'm putting this out there because I did make a video for my scuff controller and all the problems that I had with it two years down the line. So hopefully, hopefully, I don't have the same issues that I have with my scuff controller as I will with the Hex gaming controller. So my final verdict is that, yes, this gaming controller is pretty good. I would say it's a little bit different than a scuff controller since scuff, you do have a lot more customizations that you can do with it versus this one, which is basically you just get what you buy. But for those of you looking for a cheaper option while having a lot of the same features that scuff does offer, this is actually a great option. So I do stand by it. And even though I do have two custom controllers now, I do think I'm gonna be using both. So I don't plan on putting my scuff controller away just yet. I think I'm gonna be using both of them, especially if one of them dies, I could just pick up another one of these custom controllers and just go ahead and use it and continue playing. <laughs> also, I wanna thank Hex Gaming for sending me out this controller. This has been my honest review. I hope you guys have liked this video. And if you uh, have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I would love to hear what you guys have to think about this and any concerns or any questions regarding this or anything else in my setup feel free to ask me in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content just like this. If you have any questions that I haven't been able to get to you on a previous video or this video, don't forget I do stream every Wednesday. So if you have any questions, be sure to visit me on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. so you can ask away any questions that you have. But anyways guys, my name is Matthew. Thank you guys so much for watching, but as always, Peace out.